Hey folks, uh, this lesson is on geometric sequences and series. Okay, so a sequence is just a, a sequence of numbers, okay, and then the, a series is just the sum of those. So find the next term in each sequence. Okay, so this sequence is going, looks like from 3 to 6, it went up 3. From 6 to 9, it went up 3. From 9 to 12, up 3. So it looks like that one's going up plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. So 12 plus 3 is 15, so the next number is 15. Okay, over here, this one's a little harder to see. It goes from 0.25 to 0 0.50. This, then it goes from 0 0.50 to 1. Okay, and then so, so here it goes up by 0.25. Here it goes up by 0.5. Here it goes up by 1. Okay, and what's happening is, is think of this as 0.25 as a quarter, money, a quarter. And this is 50 cents. Can you see that um, 50 cents is twice a quarter? And think of this as a dollar. A dollar is twice 50 cents, and two dollars is twice a dollar. So it looks like this one's going up times two, times two, times two. Okay, when it's going up times a number, this is called a geometric sequence. So that's what this one is, is a geometric sequence. So it's going times two, times two, times two. So find the next term. Two times two is going to get me four. Okay, so it's going to be four. Okay, this one starts here. So it goes from 3 to 6, so it's either times 2 or plus 3. So let's see. If I go plus 3 from 6 to 9, plus 3, I'm sorry, from 6 plus 3 is 9, it's not that one. And if I go times 2, that would be 12, it's not that. So let's think of uh, this one goes up plus 3. From this one to this one, it goes up plus 5. From this one to this one, it goes up plus 7. From here to here, it goes up plus 9. Let me write those down right there, okay? So can you see they're going up by plus the next odd number? So this is 3, 5, 7, 9. So if I go up plus 11, so 27 plus 11 is going to get me 38, okay? So I'm going to put 38 right there, all right? All right, so in a geometric sequence, and I'll abbreviate it as GS for geometric, each term is multiplied by a common ratio. So let's go back over here. So each term is multiplied on this one times 2. So my common ratio is this number right here, 2. All right, and so uh, to get R, my common ratio R, to get that 2, we just pick any two numbers, and you do the right number divided by the left number. So let's go back. <clears throat> pick these two numbers, 50 divided by 0.25. That's kind of hard to see. Pick any two numbers, any two next to each other. 1 divided by 0.5, that's kind of hard to see, but this one's really easy to see. 2 divided by 1 equals 2 right there, okay? So we just pick any two numbers and divide the right number divided by the left number, and that's what R is right there. All right, let's try uh, with a little word problem here. You have a Petri dish with 500 bacteria. The bacteria doubles every two hours. So it says organize this information. And then we're going to write an equation for time, and this is t, for time t, where t equals every two hours, because it doubles every two hours, so my time t is going to be in two-hour cycles right there. And then we're going to find out how many bacteria you would have after one day. All right, so since i got to do it every two hours, I'm going to convert one day to 24 hours, so I'm going to make a t-chart over here. Okay, for the hours and the number of bacteria, remember, it doubles every two hours. So that's why I went from 0 to 2, and then from 2 to 4, and then 4 to 6. And I kept going times 2, or I'm sorry, plus 2 hours, plus 2 hours, plus 2 hours, until I got to 24 hours, because I want to know how much we had to do after one day. Okay, so at 0 hours, we're going to have 500 bacteria right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 500 right there. 500 times 2, because it doubles, times 2 is 1,000. So after 2 hours, there's 1,000 bacteria. After 4 hours, because it doubles every 2 hours, so I just keep going 2 hours, plus 2, plus 2. So after 2 more hours, I double that number, and that's going to take me to 2,000. After 2 more hours, right here, it's going to double that, so that's going to take me to 4,000. So I just keep doubling. Double it again is 8,000. Double 8 is 16,000. Double 16 is 32,000. Double 32 is 64,000. 64 doubled. Well, 60 doubled is 120. 64 is 128,000. Uh, 256,000. I got to keep going all the way to 24. So 256 doubled is 512. 512,000. Okay, 512 doubled is 1,024. So this is going to be 1,024,000. 
and double that, that's going to be 2,048,000. So that's going to be the answer over here. Now this one's hard to see, you guys. I'll come back and explain this in just a little bit right here. So the formula is, it's always this first number. The first number is your starting number right here. Okay, and then and then it's going to be times uh, how much it's being. If it's going to be doubled, it's going to be times two, and then to the power. It's an exponential uh, uh, power function right here. So it's an exponential function. So uh, it's going to be two to the t, where t represents every two hours. So here's two to the zero is one. Anything to the zero is one. So two to the zero is one. One times five hundred would get me five hundred. Okay, remember every two hours. So T would be one cycle of two hours right here. Two to the first is two. Two times uh, 500 is 1,000. Okay? And then go another two hours. So that means T is going to be this time two. Okay? Two squared is, um, is, is sorry, is, is four. Sorry, brain freeze right there. Four times 5,000 is 20,000. Four times five is 20. And then put the 200 right there for the 500. I think I said 5,000. Okay? So there's my formula right there. Okay? And then this 2,048,000 right here goes right here after one day right here. And I'll tell you, we're going to have a, 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 a formula. So in the next lesson, we'll show you a formula to, to write this guy right here. So don't, so don't worry about this guy too much yet. Well, I'll show you how to write a formula on all of these in just a second. Okay? All right, this time we have a half-life uh, thing. So a physicist is holding radioactive material for an experiment. He has 1,000 milligrams of material, which has a half-life of one day. So every day it cuts in half. That's what half-life means. Okay? So if he needs the amount to be 62.5 milligrams by Wednesday, on um, which day should he conduct the experiment? Okay, well, we've got to figure out how many days is this going to go from 1,000 cutting it in half, cutting it in half, and half and half until we get to 62.5. So, of course, we're going to write a table, and then we're going to write an equation for the day in. All right, and I'll show you what to, uh, how we get that equation more in the next lesson, you guys. And then, uh, and then what day are we going to need to start the experiment? Okay, remember, we have to end it on Wednesday. So let's figure out how many days it's going to be. Let's go ahead and do a table. Okay, so the day and the amount of material. Okay, on the zero day, on the very zero day, he started with a thousand milligrams. Okay, and then after one day, it gets cut in half. So half of a thousand is is 500. So there's one day. Remember, it's a half life. So every day it gets cut in half. So on the second day, get cut 500 in half, and it goes to 250. On the third day, cut 250 in half, it goes to 125. Finally, on the fourth day, cut 125 in half, and that's going to take us to 62.5. So it's going to take us um, how many days right here? It's going to take us four full days right here. Okay, so after four days, the material gets to our desired result, 62.5 milligrams. All right, so write an equation for this day in right here. Okay, a half-life, instead of on the other one where it was doubling, where it was times two, times two, times two, this is times a half, times a half, times a half. All right, and we always put this first number in the beginning. So it's going to be y equals to always the first number, and then since it's a half-life, it's going to be times a half to this power in, okay? And we'll get more into that formula into the next lesson, okay? So don't get too afraid of how do we get this formula. The next lesson will unwind it big time, okay? And then so for what day does he need to start the experiment? Okay, remember, he needs to end it on Wednesday right there. So on Wednesday, he needs to end. So after four days, the material gets to 62.5. So I put a little calendar down here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I have to end it here. So if I go backwards four days, one, two, three, four, he's going to have to start it right there on Saturday right there. So he should start his uh, radioactive material experiment on Saturday if he's going to want it to end at 62.5 on Wednesday. Okay, I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.